Welcome back to uh, Lake Lot Build. I'm here with David Samples. He is with ICF Builders of the Ozark. And so, David, can you walk us through what we're going to be working on today at, and take a look at a couple of things? So do you mind walking through the type of floor joists that we are using in the hangers and how they connect to an ICF wall? I know sure. there's a lot of people that have a lot of questions of using two different styles and two different methods of this kind of, of this kind of um, construction. Um, I'm going to turn around here so you can walk us through okay. what you're what you're looking at. You know, we just got the uh, light deck poured last week. Yeah. And uh, I think you've posted on that now. And so today we are starting on the web joists for the wood uh, floor that we'll have over this area. And so we have 16 inch LVLs that we embed into the ICF before we pour. Okay. You can edit in what it looks like on the outside. Yeah. Um, so that they can see how we cut holes in the in the ICF and then anchor the anchor bolts in yeah. when we pour. Um, but we do that. We put the the uh, LVLs in so it helps to keep the walls straight, uh, and then gives a permanent place to attach the joist hangers and then to put the joists into. So these are engineered web joists. Um, the good thing about uh, this web joist is it's made custom just for this particular house and we can tell how much deflection it has, how much weight it's going to hold, how much dead load and weight and uh, live load it's going to take to make any movement in the floors. Uh, so if you were going to have a particular kind of tile or something, um, you could engineer the amount of deflection that you're going to have so that it wouldn't crack your tile. Wow, that's amazing. I'm looking down the line here and it's just amazing of how straight everything is lined up because there's really not a, a margin of error for when you have this style mm -hmm. of um, of joist, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can't cut the ends of these, right? Is that right. correct? Well, yes and no. Um, <laughs> if you made a mistake in your measurements, um, you can cut the end, but you have to get it what they call a field fix you have to get that engineered by the manufacturer okay and they will come back in and you say well i had to cut off six inches of this and uh, for whatever reason and um, they will give you a fix it usually it, it involves adding a lot of advantech on both sides okay nailing and screwing on both sides or, or uh, t uh, gluing sometimes on both sides so that it maintains the strength that it was designed to hold in the first place sure um, so it's not the end of the world if you have to cut something if there was a mistake made or a change that needs to be made, but um, it is something that does have to be uh, engineered and, and have the stamp put on it, especially if you're dealing in a county that has uh, building codes because the, um, the building inspectors will come through and see that that is not the way that it was designed and they have to see that the engineer has stamped and it. And it, so it has to have a stamp right. on it to make sure that it's been looked at. Right. Well, the good thing is, is uh, on our job, it looks like they are all um, dead on. I'm looking down here and there is just ever so slight difference between joist to joist. Like, I mean, it is just perfect. And if you'll notice the joist hangers on the bottom, how wide they are. They yeah, do we'll scoot so that, down here. So that it doesn't have to be just exactly, you know, the, the measurement. You have to allow, allow a little bit of, uh, of space for wood to expand and contract because regardless of the how old the wood is, how long, how many times it's been in a kiln to dry, it is going to expand and contract sure. for the rest of time. Uh, yeah. Down. We'll go downstairs and then I'll show all the different um, pieces and parts that David was talking about, how the anchor bolts into the concrete. The last cup, the, the first couple of videos about how you anchor into the ICF and now that we have a couple of the boards pulled off of there, that were that some sections we're not going to need because of our stairway and so now you can see where the bolts and what it actually looks like so i'm going to go down there so david thank you so much for taking the time you're welcome okay we're on our way down into the house and so now we're going to show you now that the concrete has dried uh from our pour for the floor i can actually walk in here and uh, show you it looks pretty much the same as what it did while they were pouring Walk around here, show some of the bracing, and I believe we are maybe two weeks away from being able to pull these down, which is nice because once we pour this 
or I say pour, once we get this next floor done, we'll start on the walls and we're gonna need all this wood for all our bracing. The nice thing is, is that we'll use this wood probably three to four times on the different pours before we use it in our interior walls that'll be in here. So let's walk in here. I'll walk you through how the wood connects to the actual concrete. Let me put my hat down here real quick. Okay, so let's look at the anchor bolts and how the anchors were set into the concrete. So what, was, what happened is they cut out the hole and then that allowed the concrete to be when it was poured to slide up there and then that anchor bolt 20 cent anchor bolt is I want to say like 8 or 10 inches long maybe 8 inches so it goes back in there into the center that was held on by a piece of OSB and the bolt was sticking through there so it held it right in place and then when you pour it it stays perfect and then once it dries you pull the OSB off and Voila, you have an anchor bolt. And it is super, super strong. This section that was right here is actually going to fall back here. That, that was originally where it was, and it's going to be placed right here because of our stair opening. And so we don't quite exactly know where our head height is going to be over in this area and so we'll pull that loose we'll use some of it and then once we figure out exactly how much head height we'll put that piece on we'll be able to frame over it and that will be a vanity that is upstairs and what's a powder room and then the plumbing for that will actually be this pipe right here so it'll go up here and then into the floor joist and we'll be able to connect to all the plumbing there. Over here, were all the sleeves that I have because this wall here had to be concrete because of the light deck that's up on top here. And so this edge had to have a nice structural wall for the edge of that light deck to sit on. And so that was had to be a concrete wall. So let's go up here. I'll actually climb up on the ladder. And we'll take a look. Here. How the, so the joist hangers will hang on the wood just like, like regular uh, wood framing. The web okay. joists are really, really strong. And what it allows is, is that if you have ductwork, you can use the ductwork and go right through there. You don't have to cut any holes or weakened. If it's a wood eye joist, if you cut a hole in it, that hole has to be centered, can't be too close to the edge, and it can only be a certain diameter, or you weaken the structure. Wait for that for UPS guy to go by. There we go. So it will weaken that. So these are much stronger and they have the openings already done. So if you have, let's say you have some wire that needs to go into that corner, you can literally just go zip it through all of those. Makes it really easy. I strongly recommend if you want to have your floor joist, do it like this because on the back end, when you have to put all your mechanical, electrical, plumbing, it's much easier to see through these than to cut each hole for each one of these. Over here is our rim joist and you, I just showed you how the anchors come through and so after this part it is just typical wood framing. You drill the holes, set your anchors and our joist hangers and so what they've done is they'll start with two screws to hold that and then they'll drop it in like these and then once that's done they'll come back and use the nail gun that has the special nail gun that will set the nails here and set the nails here, which will go actually into the side of each one of these boards. I have chosen to have a nine foot ceiling in my basement. And the reason I've done that is 
our basement is a walkout basement and you can see that we'll have a view of the lake from here but I didn't want the basement to feel cramped there's two ways to do it you can increase your square footage or you can raise it a little bit and you feel a little it feels a little bit bigger and so with this I have a little bit more headspace from the top of my window to my ceiling the reason I have done that is because I'm going to have the HVAC system I'm going to be using is what's called a split system. And they're called, I think it's a mini split, split system. And so you'll have one condenser, but we will not have duct work. But in each room, you'll have a box that will have the, uh, the fan and you'll have the heating and the cooling will come out of that box. And so my thought was... If I need to put it over a window or a doorway, depending on how it finally gets designed, I have enough space and it doesn't look weird. And so my son's room will be right here. Office or third bedroom will be right here. And the master bedroom will be over there. And so my thought was is that in the event I need to put my HVAC I can put it up here because I have enough space. On the back of my house, I'm gonna have two decks. I'm gonna have a lower deck that will come out of the walkout basement, and then I'll have another deck that will be for the first floor. Let me stand out here and you guys can see how the anchor bolts for my deck is going to be. So on this side over here, you can see the anchor bolts sticking out and how the concrete was cut. The zoom up there, like I showed you. And then over here, they have not been pulled yet, but you can see how the anchor bolts stick through. And they were drilled through, and that's what held them was that OSB was what held them in the right place. And... Uh, it's really getting exciting. The workers that we have today, the framers, are top notch. It is so neat to watch them. I mean, they don't really talk much. And it's almost like each person knows what the other one's doing. And that's just a sign of a really good framing crew. And they've done all this this morning. So I have a feeling we have one, two, three, four, have five more joists to put in. After that, they'll start putting the deck on. They might be done today, so they might do this all in one day. I'm going to go over a little bit about the wood framing connecting to the Fox block. And so I'm going to turn around here. And in the Fox block is the plastic that has the connector that goes to the other side. And that is what you screw into. And I'll go down here a little bit lower. So for each one of them, there is a piece of plastic that is in here that you can connect to that you screw into. And the tensile strength of the pull from it is actually a little bit better than a two by four. I'm gonna try to walk underneath here and see if we can find you where this occurs. This one has the piece on there, so I'm not going to show you that. But let's, oh, here we go, right here. Okay, so we have a landing here. And so what we have is the joist or the, the rim joist that's going across that's connected to our wall. And you can see where it says Fox Block right here. And you literally just screw it right into it. The nice thing is, is they are every eight inches and not every 16. So the likelihood of hitting one is a lot better. And these guys did all of this in one day. This crew was amazing. They cleaned all this up uh, on the way home. And they're coming back tomorrow, but they went ahead and cleaned it up. And it's uh, really a good sign of what it is amazing crew that David has working with them.